Bonjour et bienvenue à Not Another White Box, la maison de tout ce qui est excentrique, cool et insolite. Mon nom est Cameron. Aujourd'hui, nous allons faire un tour de la Lamoncelle Liberté 440. Après, j'ai visité la bibliothèque avec mon frère. Donc, les questionner. Où est la bibliothèque? Do not adjust your TV sets. This is not another white box, and this is a real caravan that you can buy in Britain today. It's built in France though, and it's called the La Moncelle Liberty Plaisance 440 PC. It's available exclusively for Marquis Leisure, who have branches throughout the UK and have very kindly loaned me the caravan this weekend to give it a thorough live-in test. The Liberty 440 PC has a list price of £38,990 and a maximum weight of 1600 kilograms. This actually has a phenomenal payload of around 250 kilograms, depending on some of the options. It comes with a seven year water ingress warranty as standard, and amazingly, the La Moncelle is National Caravan Council approved as of September 2023. This is historically an incredibly difficult accolade for a continental manufacturer to obtain, so you can rest assured that it meets all British standards and requirements as set by the NCC for touring caravans sold in the UK. With that in mind, let's take a closer look at what makes this caravan so special. So once you've got past the initial shock of the front end, and you're slowly digesting the unusual construction technique, we can move on to the more conventional aspects of the La Moncelle. And there's still typical French twists and unique things to La Moncelle along the way, such as these amazing boat themed graphics, which give it sort of an air of quality that's just unrivaled. There's nothing else that has graphics like this. We all have to have big swooshes and gray and silver and maybe blue if you're lucky in Britain. Yet Mansell have gone for wood, which if you love this channel, you'll know that this is sort of kind of out of the 70s. No offense to La Moncelle there. I absolutely love it. But it goes deeper than that. These aren't graphics in the conventional sense. These are specially produced UV resistant graphics. And this is a theme that we're going to keep coming back to with this caravan. It's not built for you to buy it, have it two or three years and have to get rid of it because it's worn out. It's built with longevity in mind. It's something that you can invest in and be quite confident it would last you a few decades or more. And UV resistant graphics is just one of the little touches that make this caravan a really, really environmentally conscious choice because it will last you a lot longer than most caravans that you can buy in Britain today. So as we follow the graphics round, the first thing we'll discover is there's an external barbecue point here which uh, looks a little bit unconventional. It's just a European one. The fittings are fairly easy to get hold of and you can still connect your gas barbecue to it. Here we have something marked TV. Now, this is where you'll find your TV aerial input, a 12 volt output, and Marquis Leisure have converted the power socket to a British one, which uh, they've done throughout the caravan. So of course, there are a few tweaks to this, being the British spec versus the standard French one. You get alloy wheels as standard, which look quite classy. And um, elsewhere, towards the back, you'll find a standard Thetford cassette tank with the filling tank for uh, where you put the pink stuff. <laughs> Moving around to the back, and again, the shape just continues to follow the curve. And this follows years of research by Moncel. This curved shape aids with the aerodynamics and the towability of it. So the front's going to funnel the wind around it, and the back, the way it curves, is going to stop the wind from circulating behind it and dragging the caravan backwards which is what happens with every conventional square white box giving it a bit of a curve to the back dissipates um, the wind as it's going round it and means that it has a sleeker profile lower drag coefficient and actually on the tow here we got on average nearly five miles per gallon extra towing this versus our standard British normal conventional caravan at a similar size and weight. So it obviously works. 
The Manstone Liberty comes with a bicycle rack mounting point as standard and you can add on those. Um, it's a Fiamma fitting, but I think the Thule one should fit if you prefer that one. There's not really much difference. A bike rack is a bike rack after all. We've got these really smart LED lights with uh, chrome rings around them, which look quite retro and just add to that really cool um, style of the caravan overall. In this back corner, we find a little bit of French quirkiness because you may have noticed at the front there is no gas locker. That's because it's here on the back corner. Now, if I was to critique anything about this caravan, there's one point coming up here and I don't really think it's Mansell's fault, but there isn't enough room in the gas locker to get a six kilogram bottle. And I think it's because in France, the gas bottles are different sizes. And when the caravan was first brought into Britain, you could still buy the smallest color bottles, the 3.9 and 4.5 kilogram ones respectively. So we cannot blame Mansell for Cala's incompetence at discontinuing those. So it's a moot point, but something to bear in mind if you are going to buy one of these, you will need to find a flow gas system. Uh, bottles or a refillable gas system that has small bottles but there's loads of room in there so you can certainly get in all the gas that you would need next to that we have the external locker access that goes to underneath the fixed bed and standard equipment with the mansell includes the waste tank which again and this is more of a european thing how many british fans have those annoying little flaps underneath where you connect the wastewater up to that just break off or just flap down. Monsell don't go for that. It has a proper house style plumbing with a funneled nicely finished off um, wastewater chute which again attention to detail, quality, longevity, everything's built in with this van. Towards the front here you've got your mains input which is exactly the same European standard mains cable as what you get on any British caravan and towards the front cannot pass without pointing these out these really really cool side light markers at the front it kind of gives you a vibe of a caravan meets a teardrop camper it just has these little flourishes of french design what they would call je ne sais quoi which is just something to make it a little bit more interesting a little bit more unusual and finally at this front corner you'll find an onboard water tank which is very unusual certainly in a single axle um, most British vans that have these tend to be twin axle size and they tend to be at the back which I've never really understood because you end up adding a lot of weight where you don't want it. The Moncel adds it right at the front and I know there'll be loads of keyboard warriors jumping to tell me about nose weight limits. Of course I'm aware of those. You can drain the tank before you set off. Um, but if you've got a higher nose weight limit on your car you can travel with it full. So the, this can be filled through a hose pipe if you pull up at the motorhome filling point as you arrive on site, or it comes with a 12 volt pump, which you can just connect in here to decant it from your Aquarol into the tank. Very, very easy to do. And the benefit is if you do travel with it full, as soon as you turn up on site, you don't have that usual rigmarole of filling up the water. It's just there on tap as soon as you arrive. Finally, the tow hitch. This is just a conventional Alco tow hitch. It runs on a bog standard Alco chassis with a slight difference in that it has what we call the Alco Delta axle. Now, it's said that this axle will give it the road handling characteristics of proper coil sprung suspension, which I think might be Alco slightly admitting that that's a superior setup to rubber torsion. We'll gloss over that. <laughs> it comes with a Delta axle, which no British caravan has, as far as I'm aware, and also twin shock absorbers fitted as standard. You will notice an omission that there is no Alco ATC fitted to this caravan, and that's because it doesn't need it. ATC has always been something that they've had to add to caravans to make a design that inherently isn't well balanced tow well. This caravan, with its aerodynamics, its careful planning of the interior, uh, the way it keeps the weight over the axle with the kitchen and the wardrobe, everything about it has been thought out. So it tows phenomenally. I deliberately tried to get it to sway a bit at just over 60 miles an hour on the motorway. Couldn't do it. High winds, lorries passing. This caravan was solid and planted as it followed the car along. And I can see why now. In France, uh, the caravanning press use a Moncel 
as their main test caravan for all tow cars. It's because, I guess, if your car is towing this not very well, it must be a truly appalling tow car because this caravan is probably the best towing modern caravan you can find on the market anywhere in the world at the moment. So, we're done with the outside. There's still a few little bits I'll talk about the outside from when we take a little look on the interior. But for now, I think you're dying to see what makes the interior so unusual and special. Let's take a closer look. The really nice thing about the, about the interior of the Moncel is it's so spacious, bright and airy. The caravan is only 6.38 metres long overall and that's comparatively small compared to a lot of the standard spans that we buy in Britain, yet it just feels so open and spacious in here. It's a fairly standard width at 2.25 metres wide, so you can't even have the excuse that it's 8 foot wide and it's giving you space. It's just clever design. The soft colour of the wood, the bright white worktops, the light upholstery, the way they've used the windows to tunnel the light into the caravan, the huge central skylight and this massive front opening window just make it feel really bright and airy in here. And I know people are saying, oh, you can't see the view out very easily. Um, you can when you're stood up and walking around sort of by the kitchen or the wardrobe or whatever, you can very clearly see out the front window. But I actually quite like the fact that it feels a bit private in here. It's not like you're sat in a fishbowl. Walking around the campsite, um, I mean, obviously, we're just on a fairly bog standard campsite here, so there's no views or vistas to take in. But when I was wandering around, Everyone's either sat outside or sat inside their caravan with their backs to the front windows watching their telly. So I kind of don't understand this argument of you need to see the view out. I actually like the sense of privacy that this caravan affords you. Combined with the tinted windows from the outside, people can't really see what's going on in here. And that is what I think is one of its really big plus points. It's unconventional and it's unusual but it's still bright, spacious and airy. And if you want to see the view, you can stand up and gaze at it for five minutes. But I think this seating arrangement lends more in terms of usability compared to having a big front window to focus on. This is brilliant for getting your friends to sit around. And even if you're just on your own or just as a couple, you can still put your feet up towards the side and enjoy a cozy, comfortable space. And it just works from every angle, this front lounge. And trust the French to turn conventionality on its head and make something like this in a caravan. I think it's wonderful. Of course, France is the country of food. So how does the kitchen compare? Well, straight away, I will say there is not a tremendous amount of worktop space in it. But there is a big caveat here. The original French design has a hob top on here that still allows you plenty of workspace. But for the British market, they've had to fit a British oven, grill, and three burner hob on top, which is just a bog standard Thetford model that we're well used to seeing in British vans here. Now, this has even ruffled the feathers of the French caravanning press, who've actually published an article saying, of course, when the Mansell comes to Britain, it needs an oven so the British can have their roast dinner. And I love it when the French roast does because sometimes we really do deserve it. And this is one of those things, British people love a lot of spec in their vans, but you're constantly hearing that I don't use my microwave, I don't use my oven, yet we just love to have them anyway. So if cooking is your thing, you've got a full normal Thetford oven, grill and separate hob in here. But there's a few touches that you won't find in the many British caravans at all, if any, such as this touchscreen extractor fan straight above the cooker, which funnels fumes outside through a vent in the side of the caravan. Um, it's got a light, a down light for the cooker, so you can see what you're doing. It also has a clock and a built-in timer on it. So it's a really clever little thoughtful addition to the caravan there. Other little nice touches include this point up here where you can put your dish cloth and your washing up liquid just up off the worktop out of the way. Um, a really small but very important detail. Having your washing up liquid on the side takes up space so Mansell have lifted it high up out of the way. You'll find other European manufacturers such as Adria do this but for some reason in Britain we don't. Not sure why. 
It's got a fairly standard round sink with a nice folding glass top and this tap is exquisite quality. It's not the sort of fitting that we typically see in the caravan industry in Britain. It feels like you could probably hang a rope off it and climb up onto the kitchen from it. It's so strong and sturdy, which again is the theme throughout this caravan. The worktops have got this nice white gloss to them, which is then reflected on the cupboards, which again just makes it feel very spacious and open, as well as being very durable. All the cupboards feel very solid. I'm not sure if they are actually hollow because they certainly don't feel like it. But as expected, everything in here is soft shut, including the drawer in the kitchen down below for all your cutlery. Time to move on to the boudoir and in true French style this is a really sensual place to be. Before this turns into carry on camping like most of my videos seem to, I'm just going to get on and tell you what's great about this part of the caravan. You've noticed straight away it's a real stylistic contrast from the front end that has the turquoise and the very sparse wall coverings. Instead we've got curtains, we've got fly nets and these lovely opening curtains which divide the bedroom off from the living area. Now, every British caravan you ever see, regardless of the price, has one of those horrible hearing aid beige concertina stupid things on a track that as soon as you open it, it just comes straight off or you've got to manually bunch it back up and it's just not really a very nice fitting at all, yet manufacturers seem to love fitting them. This, on the other hand, is a really simple idea. It's probably cost less money, to be fair, but it just adds that certain style and flair that we're learning the Marcel is all about. I love it. Apart from making jokes about doing the can-can through the middle of it, it does actually make the space feel very cosy and warm and such a nice vibe when you're sat back here. The main TV point in the caravan is in the bedroom, so the French are suggesting here that you're not really going to lounge about at the front and watch TV. We don't even have a TV in our caravan, so I'm probably not the one to comment on that. But what I will comment on is the size of this bed. It is huge. As fixed beds go in caravans, and as people with tall partners like myself will know, it's a struggle to get them to fit if they're over six foot. Now, most fixed beds in British caravans tend to be between six and six foot three long, and certainly no more than four and a half foot wide. Occasionally you get a five foot king size in some really top end premium vans. But other than that, they tend to be quite cozy, um, or as we should say in French, bijou. And they tend to have a corner cut off and the Mansell does not compromise on anything. It's four foot seven wide, so there's plenty of width on the bed and it's actually six foot six um, long. So there's plenty of room and there is no cutout on this corner. So you have a perfectly square mattress. And of course, like all fixed beds, there's tons of storage underneath it, which you can simply lift up on the gas struts. Under here, you'll find the leisure battery. It's also where the gas locker is at the back corner. And we have that external access locker, which I showed you earlier. And another little trick that Marcel pull here is to just slowly eke away the base of the bed to expose more floor space. Now, it was uh, the British caravan industry that figured this one out in the 60s. If you tapered the seat bases and exposed more floor covering, visually it gave you the impression of a larger space. So Moncel have employed that technique here and tried to expose as much of the floor space as possible to just visually make it feel like you're in a much larger space than you are. But having said that, even though the bed has no cut off, there is plenty of room to get around it. Access around the bed is easy. And apart from the compromises of the actual layout itself, which we can't really do anything about, um, the bed's huge. I have never stayed in a caravan with a fixed bed that is this big. And once you're in bed and you've decided that uh, the aircon is too cold for you, Mansell even have the remote for it. So instead of getting up to turn it off above the door, just press one button and you can turn it off from the bed. But that's not all you can do back here because in addition to all this extra lighting that we've got, we've even got um, above cabinet lights and little spotlights up here. Underneath the bed, we have these, um, these light fittings which have USB charging in both of them. Um, the ones at the front of the caravan also have USB charging. And you will recognize these pointed spotlights from British caravans, but what you won't have seen 
is the touch sensitive night light which you can either leave on if you're someone who's afraid of the dark <laughs> or if you're getting up to go to the loo in the middle of the night you don't need to wake your partner up um, by putting all the lights on and have all the lighting just blaring in the middle of the night you can just use the first function to just gently illuminate the space and not wake everybody up so Monsell have really thought of everything um, you've even got the shelf just behind the bed to put your phone on as it's charging and again there's just tons of storage all soft shut cupboards and when we've been talking about the quality of this van another thing that's impressed me is all the cupboards line up all the panel gaps are the same if you bought a British van you will know that's one of the first things that you have to wrangle when you get one yet Mansell have managed to do it beautifully here from the factory with no tweaks or snagging list necessary so again I just have to commend them it's a fantastic design in the corner of the bedroom you'll find the washing area which again is oozing with French details such as the floating sink the glossy worktops that match uh, the kitchen and the table at the front to even move into the cupboard design at the front you've got dual mirrors on here so um, ladies or boys you can do your makeup in the mirrors here and it's well lit um, and there's tons of storage again toiletries can go in here in this big cupboard below um, there's just loads of space to put things and in the washroom not only does it have this blue lighting as if you're in some kind of club some kind of club um, you've got quite a spacious shower which closes off um, the toilet at this end so you don't have to get that end of the washroom wet when you use the shower there's ventilation in here so you don't get condensation and there is also a heater outlet in here so it will warm up the space if necessary it's got a Thetford swivel toilet which again we're used to seeing in British vans completely standard same as any one that you will find in a British caravan and of course it's a Mansell so there's tons of storage you've got these handy little shelves above for any toiletries that you wish to leave in here so overall it's a well thought out washroom the only thing I can critique is there are no hooks to hang your towels as we've been drying hours out we've been hanging them over the edge of these shower doors so that's something to bear in mind if you buy one but you could dead easy get some of those hooks on suckers or something if you don't want to drill holes in the wall just to have somewhere to hang your towels to dry but other than that I can't really fault it at this point in the video I'm going to do a fairly quick summary of my five favorite design details about this caravan and the obvious one to start with is the front lounge which we have already covered a bit but at night time it sort of really comes to life just at the edge of the lounge down here we have a little charging station which has a shelf to put your laptop iPads phones or whatever you've got USB charging there's two of them and a main socket British of course and we have the light switch for the lights that surround the front seating area it's such a simple little addition but I think it really makes this part of the caravan and the criticism I've seen online is that this space um, is, is claustrophobic and these are obviously comments from people who've never been in this caravan because this front end is huge there is room to swing a cat here at the front it is enormous headroom aplenty even once you stood up around the table the headroom is almost instant I dare say it's a little bit more of a usable space than most conventional British vans that would have a chest of drawers where I'm sitting and we've not missed that feature at all the table is permanently up which can be a little bit annoying depending on uh, what your view on that is but it's so adaptable and you can move it every which way there is so much adjustment on it um, that you can do without disturbing everything that's on top of it even right here at the peak I can move the table out of the way and comfortably stand up um, so it really is truly versatile and works really well and I think that's the takeaway from this space is that it's so well designed and well thought out but just while we're on the subject of the front lounge another thing I'm going to mention is the quality of this van is is just evident in every little detail and every inch underneath the front seating area we have a tiny bit of under locker storage but mostly under here you will find um, the onboard water tank the draining points and also the hot water boiler so you wouldn't be putting too much under here 
but look at how it's finished off. There we've got the combi boiler. The wood is all neatly routed and sanded and it's a solid chunk of plywood. The framework is not exposed. There is no sawdust to be found. The screws that hold it together are all equidistant and all pointing the same way. This is a level of detail and craftsmanship that we used to see in British caravans back in the 50s and 60s and we just don't really get that anymore. But even the way they've cut the wood to the shape of it with minimal joins, it just shows that it's got such attention to detail and quality craftsmanship all the way through. The second item that really impresses me about the Le Mans uh, again, devil is in the detail, is the blinds. They're not, um, there's no logo on them, so I'm not really sure who makes them, but even the material that they're made out of seems way more substantial than the blinds we get um, in British caravans. And that's the constant thing I see on Facebook forums and internet forums is that people have problems with the blinds. They are all really easy to operate. They're dead smooth. They've all got fly screens as well. And they just feel like a really good quality product. Even the big one at the front, which comes down in two halves, which for a large front, front opening window, you'd be surprised to find also has a fly screen on it, which I'm not sure there is a British van that has a large front window that also has the fly screen as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Mansell have managed to do it here. And even like these mouldings that go around it are really, really good quality. Um, and they're not sort of hanging down. I've seen there's, there's a particular make of British van that's notorious for the surround that goes around the higher up windows, just looking like it's about to fall off the ceiling. This is a really substantial piece of kit and it's the same material as what some of the exterior mouldings are made of. So I think you can be sure that this is going to last as long as the caravan does. The third small detail about the Moncel that I absolutely love, and if you watched my uh, Bayer Discovery Default 4 L review before this, you'll know that I gave it top marks for having a shoe cupboard next to the door because it's the most useful thing when you step in the caravan. As you can see, this little patch of floor is wet from where we've been stepping in. Um, you want to just step in the van, take your shoes off and put them somewhere. Moncel don't just have a shoe cupboard. They have a shoe drawer. I'm very impressed by that. Sad, I know, but really useful little feature when you're out and about caravanning. The fourth thing which I love about the La Moncel Liberty is actually the heating and cooling system. Um, it has a Truma 6E combi boiler, which can work from either gas or electric, but it also has a roof mounted Truma air conditioning unit fitted as standard. So they're both controlled from up here on this very futuristic panel and you can set them uh, to have heating, cooling, just a bit of ventilation through the vents, um, or you can have it set to automatic. So regardless of what you're doing, it will switch between the heating system and the aircon as necessary. But I hear what you're saying, the aircons, um, you know, they're always a little bit noisy. You've turned it on up there, you're going to bed at night, and the aircon's making noise, and you think, oh, I've got to get out of bed, I've got to turn the air conditioning off, if thought of that, you get a remote with it so you can lay in bed and turn it on and off to your heart's content as well as adjust the temperature from this handset. Amazing. The final thing which I really have to commend the Moncel up for, which sets it apart from everything else that's available at the moment on the market, is this fridge. Which immediately you, you will look at it and say, God, that's absolutely huge. And yes, it is. You can certainly fit a week's worth of food in here. It's got little things like you've got a fruit and veg drawer, you've got a, a drinks drawer which slides out, and you've got a, a freezer compartment at the top, which is huge. But that is not the main attraction of this fridge. Something you can't see, which I'm going to tell you about, is it's actually what we call a compressor fridge. So it doesn't run from gas, it doesn't run from mains electric, it runs entirely from 12 volt and is capable of being run from your leisure battery. And no sooner as I'm saying that, people go, no, you must never run your fridge off your leisure battery. This is a completely different beast altogether. And these are being fitted in top level motorhomes and it's something which is yet to filter down into the caravan industry. Mansell are industry leaders, even on the continent for fitting these as standard. This is a horrendously expensive item to fit. You're looking at sort of three to 4,000 euros for a unit of this size. 
But the trade-off is you will never use your gas to run it, so it doesn't need it. And if you're paying for your electric on the pitch in a metering system or you're paying extra for it, you don't need it. It will run off the battery. So all that happens is it has a 12 volt motor which runs the compressor, gets the fridge down to the right temperature. And once it's there, just like your fridge at home, it cuts out. So occasionally you hear a little bit of a buzz from the fridge, just like you would your fridge at home. But I really can't mark it down for that at all. It's not annoying. It's not particularly loud and it only kicks in maybe a couple of times an hour, if that, during the middle of the night when the door's kept shut. So this is actually a really, really big selling feature of the caravan because I'm not sure there's another caravan available, um, certainly for in, in Britain from a British manufacturer that has a compressor fridge fitted. And as we get further and further down this route of our nationwide gas bottle shortage, something like this is going to make a really big difference to your caravanning habits. If I had £38,000 to spend on a caravan, I would put it on this. Very safe in the knowledge that I could have it as long as I wished. I wouldn't have to be thinking about replacing it in three years because it would wear out or leak or have issues with it. I have every single confidence having used it this weekend, combined with my experience of using so many other caravans over the years. I have every confidence that you could buy this as a lifetime investment and you could keep it 10 20 maybe even 30 years or more we know that the french have a great reputation for building strong caravans that last a very long time and i certainly believe this moncel is a true credit to the manufacturer oh i think we should resume to a bit of french culture and enjoy a cheese course So I bet the question that you're all dying to know is how does this caravan tow? And the short answer is, I think this could be the smoothest towing modern caravan I have ever had the pleasure of towing. It is phenomenal. The road handling of it is just incredible. Um, you don't get the bouncing and the pitching with it at all like you get on most normal modern vans. Um, which I think is largely down to the upgraded Delta axle, which no British caravan at all has fitted as standard or is even available as an option. Um, overall, when you're passing lorries and things, it doesn't have that twitching and buffeting that uh, caravans have. And I'm sure that's because of the shape at the front, the way it funnels the wind around the caravan. Um, and like I mentioned on my tour of the outside, the curved back end is also helping to reduce drag. Uh, looking at my miles per gallon, we're on average between three and five miles per gallon better off than what we were towing um, a standard British van of a similar size and weight. And you know, it's not the most scientific test in the world. I mean, it is a Volkswagen after all, it could be lying to me. But, um, you know, it's a pretty good indication that it's working. But I know from my point of view as the driver, that the caravan is just no drama on the back of the car. It, it's, it's at the top end of what my car can tow when it's fully loaded. And I have towed caravans that heavy before with this car. And it feels like, although the car's planted and in charge, you really know it's there. And I'm not saying the Mansell's not there, you know it's on the back, you can feel there's a weight there, but it's not 
bothering me at all. There's no twitching, there's no pitching up and down, there's no moving side to side like you get with caravans. And bear in mind, this does not have Alco ATC fitted, which is the um, stabilization um, program that Alco have developed. But obviously with the Mansell, we've got a slightly rear set axle, we've got that curvaceous shape, we've got the heaviest weight in the van, in the wardrobe, in the kitchen, over the axle. Um, Everything about it has been well thought out to make it tow really well. And I've run out of superlatives to describe just how amazing this caravan is to tow. Um, but we're nearly back at Marquis Leisure now, um, where we've got to hand over the Mansell. I'm going to give you my final thoughts um, once we get there. So I'm going to enjoy towing this wonderful caravan, but I've still got a few more minutes left to enjoy it. So we're back here at Marquis Leisure in Sheffield where I have the awful task of having to give this caravan back which I think leads me on to my final thoughts. I mean I think if you watch the video all the way through you know this is absolutely without a shadow of a doubt not another white box approved. But I think I'm going to go one further than that and if it wasn't for my age and struggling to finance £38,000 I wouldn't be giving this back today. I would actually buy this caravan. I mean, out of everything that I get to review and look at, there's so many vans that I just love and cherish and have enjoyed using. But I always end up coming back to my old Cheltenham or my old Sprite 400. This is the future of caravanning, to be honest with you. The whole package of the leak-proof polyester shell, the strong upgraded Alco chassis with the smoother towing axle, the aerodynamics of it, the comfort, the build quality inside, the size of the bed, the equipment it has as standard. There is no downside to this caravan from my point of view. Yes, there's been criticisms of people say it looks a little bit like a horse box. I mean, that's up to you if you want to uh, be a bit of a heathen about it. But other than that, the only other very, very slight thing people have said again and again and again is there's not a window out from the front. And like I've said to you, I haven't minded that. We've both felt when we're using the van, it becomes a cozy enclosed space. And let me ask you this, when you stay in a hotel or even when you're at home, how long do you spend like this looking out the window? The answer is a few seconds. And it's kind of what I said at the start of the video, change your perception of what caravanning is. This caravan is attempting to start to rewrite the rule book and it does it brilliantly. So I have the really sad task now. I've got to go hand the keys back. But like I said, if at my age I could finance £38,000, we would be taking this home with us. It is that good. I don't think I will ever <laughs> give a caravan that much of a seal of approval. But I'm sure you'll have sensed from my enthusiasm throughout. It is truly magnificent. Thank you very much for watching today and if you've enjoyed today's video please do subscribe to Not Another White Box and be sure to join in on all forms of social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you all again soon. This is like when you add in all those words on an essay to get your word count. It's a very good space to do that and have a shower in this shower room. Aha! These are my mind.